Welcome to Wits in the Walks of Life, a part of the Synapse. I'm Inchara Atreya and I'll be hosting this episode along with Sharanya G.A. We have Ms. Sangeeta Narayanaswamy here with us today. Ms. Sangeeta is the Chief Dietitian of Yashomati Hospitals in Bangalore. She has 18 years of experience in the field of clinical nutrition and dietetics. She is also the founder and partner of The Healthy Binge. She has experience in counseling lifestyle-related issues, also for corporate clients. Thank you for being here today, Ms. Sangeeta. Thank you, Inchara. Thank you, Sharanya. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Okay, so let's start off. Can you tell us a bit about your journey? How did your passion towards being a dietitian develop? Um, I have about... 18 years of experience in the field of nutrition and dietetics. Uh, I started my career um, working as a diabetes uh, dietitian for a very well-known diabetologist in Bangalore. Actually, nutrition and dietetics happened by fluke. I was um, waiting for my engineering seat. So interim, I had to join some course. I joined uh, BSc Clinical Nutrition and Dietetics. But that two months uh, made a lot of difference. I started having a lot of interest about food. So I said, I'm not going to do engineering and continue doing clinical uh, nutrition. So that's how my um, passion for dietetics started. Then I started working with a lot of cardiologists, diabetologists, and all of them, you know, for the first 10 years of my uh, career, during this time, I realized that actually, um, you know, curing or uh, reversing diabetes or heart-related issue is not the thing. You have to do something beyond that. So uh, we started off with preventive nutrition. Preventive nutrition was very new, probably uh, 12 years ago. Uh, we did a lot of studies. We we had patients and we put them on diet and exercise and we realized that diet and exercise can reverse diabetes. People who have just been detected with diabetes or with some uh, cholesterol issues. So my passion is preventive uh, nutrition and in this whole journey I have realized that food has this innate quality to cure or prevent certain diseases or, you know, you just change your lifestyle and everything kind of moves back to its place. You become normal. So that's how my journey and passion for dietetics happened. Wow, that's really interesting. Okay, what is your understanding of having a healthy relationship with food? Healthy relationship with food, uh, you know, uh, means that you, one has to eat for reasons of our uh, physiological needs, right? Not for our emotional hunger. To simply put it in one sentence, that's what it means. But it is very, very easy to uh, follow having a healthy relationship with food because, uh, you know, we we should not um, restrict a lot of food in our daily choices, okay? We cannot label food as being either very good or very bad. Because if food is food, right? If something is called food, that means it is good for your health and you can eat it. Otherwise, we wouldn't call it food, isn't it? Okay. Um, we should try cooking. Cooking actually um, builds that bond with food in any small way. I'm not saying you have to do elaborate cooking every day. You start understanding food when you start working with uh, ingredients, when you combine, start combining ingredients to your uh, likes. So healthy relationship with food is very, very simple. You just choose to eat food from all the five food groups. Do not restrict a lot of uh, food. Try to include all the things that is locally available. So it's very easy to maintain. Healthy relationship is not, with food is not very complicated, actually. Yeah, that's really true. I think the lockdown has caused a lot of people to experiment around with ingredients as well yeah okay yeah. So also trying back the lockdown, even i feel during the lockdown people have started cooking more they started enjoying food more so i feel everyone is having a healthy relationship with food. yeah yeah 
and also one of the yeah. things is you know the more relaxed you eat your food the more good it does to your health that is actually one of the studies and uh, you know you you actually enjoy your food and you start appreciating it more when you eat in a very relaxed environment yeah definitely okay also tying back to the lockdown the food we eat affects not only our physical well-being but our mental health too what would you say is a good diet for the brain um see there is um, nothing called as good diet for the brain you don't eat for your brain right you actually eat for your whole body and of course brain is one of an one of the important parts of our uh, system because it keeps working 24 bar 7 so you need to give a lot of good nutrients to uh, your system when you see um, a heart healthy diet is also a brain healthy diet that's what we counsel people we say your uh, food should uh, contain all the food groups we we have five food groups foods that give you carbohydrates foods that that give you proteins foods that give you a lot of vitamins and minerals foods that give you fats and foods that is what we term as sugar and salt right so all of these things should be in a right proportion but if you say what will uh, what nutrients will actually help your brain is mainly omega 3 fatty acids that can be you know you can get it from nuts you can get it from uh, certain fishes you have b vitamins and antioxidants that come from a variety of vegetables and fruits that we eat we call call it you know uh, we say choose from your rainbow if you if you can kind of relate to eating a lot of vegetables and fruits and and if those colors appear in your rainbow that means you're getting all the nutrients that is uh, required that will support your brain health your heart health in general your uh, physical system you know if you ask me brain food all the green leafy vegetables nuts and seeds you'll be surprised coffee and tea to some fatty fishes they give you a lot of nutrients that are required for our brain wow okay um the next thing is we live in a world where fast food is taking over at a very very rapid pace and it's something we hear about every day there are uh, teenagers adolescents who are addicted to fast food but we all know that it isn't good for us so can you talk a little bit about how this is taking a toll on people um see we spoke about eating a variety of food right we spoke about eating uh, a balanced meal uh, choosing food from all the five food groups what happens with fast food fast food has a very poor quality nutrient profile if you see most of the fast food is prepared with refined uh, ingredients for example you know maida probably has a lot of salt or has a lot of uh, sugar uh, you know what happens when we eat food which is which has very less nutrients or no nutrients we call it empty calories right it is giving you only calories from the refined flour and sugar so what happens at the time first thing is uh, people are at a very high risk of putting on weight obesity is what we see first then slowly digestive uh, issues start you know once the once you're obese probably most of your hormones are not working well then the other thing you see is digestive issues it can slowly lead to probably you know not in youngsters but in middle aged people or people who are slightly older you see it leads to type 2 diabetes heart diseases sometimes blood pressure is so high it leads to stroke so, some forms of cancer too okay so eating fast food very very regularly your body is not nourished well so obviously it is not going to work well when it comes to fast food the frequency matters right all of us want to have something very sweet at one point of time or something that is slightly tastier than the regular food there has to be there has to be certain uh, uh, probably i'll say um you know if you eat it once in 3 months once in 6 months and you know how much you are eating probably that's okay but it cannot be on a daily basis or it cannot be very very frequently okay okay um fast food also has a big impact on your brain health because 
uh, fast food have a lot of uh, sugar refined carbs unhealthy fats and processed food this significantly contributes to impaired memory and learning and there are a lot of research that shows that uh, when you have a lot of sugar refined carbs unhealthy fats this also increases uh, our risk of diseases such as alzheimers and dementia okay i think that's very important for everyone to know and understand also something that ties mainly back to adolescents and teenagers there are a lot of eating disorders that develop and this has become more common in today's world do you think that maybe culture and upbringing plays a role in these eating disorders what leads to people maybe forcing themselves not to eat um see uh, if you take our culture right i can see culture as two things okay one is the culture and the tradition that we follow at our homes right all of us um in our families we follow a certain pattern of eating you will see especially in india the pattern changes from household to household if you see in that context uh, where people are eating local regional you know if they are eating a clean diet balanced diet or you can also say vegan diet okay this does not lead to any uh, eating disorders because we are trying to choose food from all the food groups and we are trying to balance all the uh, nutrients even the uh, region plays a major role on how your body will respond to certain foods right but locally grown foods are very high in vitamins and minerals required for being in that uh, region so if you eat that if you see no but there is another um, culture that we see nowadays you know people um there are culture uh, i see especially in youngsters who are on instagram or say, say any social media uh, for that matter and following certain groups or certain people okay and they want to be like they are probably their role models or some actors or some models and these uh, you know teenagers or youngsters develop a lot of eating disorders uh you know in in a um, they want to be that person right so following a particular group or following a particular person leads to a lot of eating disorder they want to be say size 0 or they want to be slim these uh, kids or these teenagers or youngsters they fail to understand that each body is different so you have to eat differently depending on the body requirements there is no one size fits all in a diet what has worked for someone else not necessarily work for me so uh, uh, we see that people stop eating fats completely people stop eating sugar completely they give up on carbohydrates they want to eat only protein uh, they think you know they will be that some other person if they follow them so the culture is of two types one is i follow somebody or some group one is what you follow at home so there are two different things i hope i was clear yeah yeah thanks it, it that's very true adolescents often get into the stigmas that they can be someone else but it's really important to understand that we all have to be ourselves and take care of our own bodies and also okay. uh, you, uh, there's one more thing um see each body is different when i say each body is uh, different probably we have to understand that if i i have to understand that i can never be that size zero uh, person but still be healthy you know i uh, my bmi can slightly be higher but i can still make sure that i am the most healthiest person and and exercise regularly and eat regularly size zero not necessarily mean that the person is healthy you know people have to understand that too being slim is not being healthy yes definitely okay sharanya would you like to take it from here forward so bringing this topic forward can you tell us a bit about fat diets and how it spreads uh see fat diets are plenty you know you just have to google diet and it will throw some 100 diets uh you know when you search there's so many diets people go on keto diets people go on intermittent fasting diets people follow mediterranean diets people follow only juice diet cabbage soup diet you know you can go on uh, you know 
listing them uh, i had uh, one 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 of one person coming to a clinic and she said her daughter goes on you know having something called as a, a cotton ball diet so can you imagine uh, these children in a thing to be slim they just take a ball of cotton dip it in some juice and put it into their mouth and keep taking the juice that is their diet i mean it was very weird and i was hearing it for the first time but but when i searched for it i realized that european models follow that diet i believe so you can imagine how some diet that's that's been followed in europe by some models can come to india and somewhere in bangalore so uh, you know fat diet spread very fast because something has worked for someone and they by following that diet they would have achieved something small they they can kind of put it in the social media and make it very famous so it spreads very quickly but uh, the person who is following the fad diet is only writing about that particular time what has happened to him so i am following some fad diet i have lost so much of weight and it has worked for me but nobody understand what happens to that person probably 3 months down the line 6 months down the line what happens to that person they don't realize all the fat diets who fo- whoever follows the fat diets eventually gain back all the weight that they have lost there is no uh, any study that suggests that you know i followed a certain diet and i was able to kick off all my weight and i maintained it for my life no every fat diet when not followed after certain period of time your weight bounces back and you know when it bounces back probably you also realize you you have ended up with lot of health issues so no fat diet nobody should follow any fat uh, diet even if it is spreading like a wildfire we have to an- analyze before choosing to follow uh, something and even if you are if you're wanting to follow that for a certain period of time you definitely have to uh, you know take a guidance from a qualified uh, dietitian at least she will help you how to go about it for a certain period of time and also manage the um uh, you know manage the other things like how do you get your vitamins if you're not eating properly how do you supplement with minerals and all of that so the first thing is no fat diet and if it, even if you're wanting to do something you know you definitely have to take a guidance from a qualified dietitian this was very helpful and it also makes us realize that what is popular might not, not always be right so this was really well said so the next question is can what are some easy ways to eat better um eating better is very very easy i told you right having a relationship with food is very very easy okay so if you want me to give you pointers on uh, ways to eat better first thing is choose local and eat local okay that is the most important thing you don't want food traveling thousands of miles leaving some carbon footprint right so you have to choose locally available ingredients because they will be full of nutrients and it is available to you mo after harvesting immediately it is available to you so eat local choose a variety variety of foods from all the food groups that really helps it will give you all the nutrients each color of the vegetable gives you certain nutrients so when you choose a variety of foods you also ensure that you are taking in all the vitamins and minerals that are required for our day to day activities third thing is portion control when i say portion control you know one chapati might work for me but might not work for some other person maybe he might need two chapatis so we should understand our body requirements so use our um, you know our body signals and understand our body signals and stop eating when you have to actually stop eating so portion control is also very very individualized fourth thing is never ever skip a breakfast you see a lot of adolescents and teenagers skipping breakfast you know because they are in a hurry to go to school or even youngsters hurry to go to college or go to work they skip breakfast but that is 
breakfast is a very very important uh, meal in a day so you should never ever skip breakfast ensure you eat three main meals and at least have one snack a day we recommend two snacks in a day in between but at least practice eating one snack in a day okay and if you choose fruits for that snack that will be excellent last but not the least exercise exercise for at least 20 to 30 minutes exercise is not only for people who have some problem to control sugar or to lose weight exercise is an integral part of uh, everybody you know we need to exercise at least 20 to 30 minutes so these are a few pointers that probably might help you start eating better people have been binge eating all through the pandemic what effect would this have on their health according to you what is the best way to break binge eating pandemic should not be a reason for anyone to shift from their uh, routine but you know we realize this pandemic has really affected all of us across the world either physically mentally emotionally right uh, what we can do is first thing is don't break your routine treat this time also the same as your regular probably what would you do if you're going to college or if you're going to work try to follow the same routine even during pandemic but the only thing is you are confined to your homes right you cannot move around a lot mm, start eating healthy uh, you know you can kind of experiment with food we see a lot of people who have started cooking who have started experimenting with different cuisines and all of that you can do it but do it in that healthy circle right whatever seems healthy that's what you have to do do not do a lot of refined um, um do not do not have a lot of junk food or have a lot of refined food or sugary food because during pandemic you cannot even if something happens you cannot go to hospital very easily nowadays so you have to realize that um ensuring eating healthy and staying healthy is very important during pandemic because hospitals are not easily accessible uh nowadays and people have this fear of uh, you know getting infected if they go to ha- hospital so that is one thing that you have to uh, keep in mind if we continue to binge eat we have to understand that it is going to affect our weight cholesterol blood pressure sugar whatever whatever uh, you know even if um, you are a person who who doesn't have uh, say higher blood sugars or you are not diabetic if you continue to binge eat probably you know this lockdown or this pandemic can make you a diabetic because if you have the tendency uh, if you have a family history then when you continue to not eat properly it can have a detrimental uh, effect on your uh, health so uh, how do you break it just you know start doing your regular routine how how what would you do if you go to school on a regular day what would you do if you go to work treat treat your day as that and you know probably continue that same routine what you were following before the pandemic i think that would really help that that will also help you stay safe and healthy this is very helpful and even i needed to hear this so thank you for this and the last question not the last but this question would would you say that this field has had an impact either positive or negative on your mental health um uh, i would say definitely uh, positive because uh, after uh, studying nutrition i have uh, realized that most of our non communicable diseases right we call it ncds non communicable diseases like diabetes hypertension cholesterol obesity and all of that can be completely reversed by just eating healthy and uh, exercising and when you exercise when and when you eat healthy this has a direct effect on your uh, brain health right there's a lot of positivity when uh, when you eat healthy and when you exercise uh, each of your organ is working well your brain is uh, working well your um, eating healthy is just a way of life it it's not a stop gap arrangement that we do because uh, you have a certain uh, condition so once we realize that uh, 
food is a integral part of our life and eating it in the right way can contribute to your physical and mental health obviously it gives you a lot of positivity so i i think it has you know kind of ha- had only a positive effect on me and my mental health very good to hear the last question for this episode is what advice give, would you give students who would like to enter this field um see this field is very very vast okay mm, um uh, the field of nutrition is uh, not only about counseling patients or uh, you know being a dietitian we need to understand uh, there is uh, there are vast opportunities you know you can work in hospitals food industries specialty clinics wellness centers fitness industries sports centers hospitality industries so depending on your um, i like to interact with people a lot i like to listen to people a lot so for me uh, counseling a patient understanding what they eat how i can change their eating behavior you know that really kind of kindles that uh, um, you know thing in me to work with them so if a person who loves food and loves to talk can become a dietitian you know counsel people a person who wants to experiment a lot with food try different things can go and work in a food industry or start off making their own products okay so this field is very vast depending on what your passion or what your uh i would say what uh, your behavioral pattern is you know do you want to see people on a daily basis do you want to work alone in a lab depending on what you like you should uh, choose one of it currently this is the most promising field i would say you would have realized after the pandemic people are talking only about immune boosting food and uh, you know how it can help you uh, uh, not get uh, the virus and you know how you can stay healthy so i see uh, this to be a very promising field and if you have passion for uh, food and passion to counsel i think it's a very good uh, field to be in sure that this would help a lot of students and thank you for the for your time thank you very much yes. for inviting me yes this has been very informative and i'm sure it will help a lot of people understand how they can have a healthy relationship with food thank you so much thank you very much inchara thank you sharanya Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Wits in the Walks of Life, a part of the Synapse. Today's guest was Ms. Sangeeta Narayanaswamy, who is a dietitian from Bangalore, India. I hope you enjoyed learning about how food affects our mental health. Stay tuned to hear stories from accomplished individuals in a variety of fields. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening.